Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Extreme Vlogs, everyone. If you're new to the channel, have no fear, because John Woods is always here, and I'm ready to direct you all from being amateur, amateur, punk-ass wrestling fans into becoming the cream of the crop, becoming professional wrestling fans that have desire, heart, passion, and momentous occasions of love for this organization. Instead of having organizational love towards a company that you secretly hate. And have no fear also because I'm not here just to make a video. I'm here because I'm raw, uncut, uncensored, and most importantly, I'm here to lay the impact on all your candy asses, which involves a smackdown of multiple different sorts and fashions. Today I'm here to incite you all on a rant video that I have been desired to make for quite some time now. And I have this feeling within me that the WWE are currently limiting the resources that they currently have with the cruiserweights. They took the cruiserweights away several years ago because they were mismanaging them. They took them away several years ago because they didn't know how to correctly book them and establish these cruiserweights into dominant superstars. They had the likes to do several great things with these guys back then. They had Rey Mysterio. They had Paul London. They had Chavo Guerrero. And they had many others. But you know, what happens uh, when you bring back a division that has more promise and more hope and, and uh, more of a solid future when you have the likes of Neville, when you have the likes of TJ Perkins, when you have the likes of Austin Aries and Rich Swan and uh, all the others like Cedric Alexander. The future is very bright. But if you continuously, continuously give these superstars nothing to work with, no opportunities, no real opportunities to work with, how can these superstars go out there and shine like stars? How can these superstars be motivated? How can these superstars go out there to try to conquer their dreams and aspirations and make them become reality instead of something in the past, something fictionized? They can't. Um, someone like Drew Gulak, who I have tons of respect for, going back to the days of CZW, Combat Zone Wrestling, when he had the championship, the world championship in that particular company for over 200 days. That's pretty good. But nowadays, in, in WWE, he's doing nothing. They teased Drew Galloway. Or they didn't tease Galloway. They, yeah, they teased Galloway, but Galloway's not crazy. Um, they teased Drew Gulak and Tony Nese becoming a tag team. My question is, why didn't that happen? Why didn't you allow them to become a tag team? You know, you have a certain amount of superstars in the cruiserweight division that can shine by themselves. Austin Aries can shine by himself. He's fantastic on the microphone. Uh, he's a great wrestler in and out of the ring. Uh, he's one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen in my entire life. Is he the world's greatest man that ever lived? That's yet to be seen. But he is a really good wrestler. Okay. TJ Perkins, an incredible athlete. Okay, Incredible. Star Spangled. Um, another great athlete that can get himself over is Callisto. I know how much most of you hate uh, or do not endorse Callisto due to his you know, former run-ins with certain match types like with Ryback and such. But Callisto's a, a talented individual who just got drafted to Monday Night Raw. And we should all be supportive of him um, in his during his career. 
The champion Neville is another top cruiserweight. And as many as much as people would like to say this, also another top cruiserweight that people uh, overlook sometimes, Sami Zayn, who is a cruiserweight. He's about the same weight class as Neville, so yeah. <sighs> Xavier Woods, New Day. Kofi Kingston from New Day. Um, Tyler Breeze, multiple others. And, and these guys have been given opportunities beyond the cruiserweights. But there's a lot of guys who haven't. Um, you should. You should. You need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hold on. Ooh, you still have no viewers, but... Oh, boy. My gosh. Okay. So my point simply is this. You have these talented aspects. You have these talented superstars that go out there and bust their asses every single night, just like some of your main event guys, just like some of your established superstars. Now, I can understand making certain number of talented cruiserweights stay within the realm of being cruiserweights, just cruiserweights. But the team of Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. Actually, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I didn't really have anything super prepared for this video. I'm actually going to go to WWE.com. I'm going to go through the Cruiserweights and tell you exactly what I think of each one. Let's have a backer. Hmm. Because that's the that's really the only way I can compare. Um, try to give everybody something to work with. Okay. Okay. Another cracker. All right, we got one viewer. Welcome to the channel, whoever you are. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm sick and tired of the way the WWE is booking the Cruiserweights. Because in my personal opinion, and multiple other people's opinion, they're limiting the Cruiserweights and what the Cruiserweights can actually do. Yeah, the Cruiserweights are high-risk taking, offense playing, all-around, smack-it-down type performers. But you're limiting one key a a feature about these guys. These guys are not just the high-risk flake flakers <laughs> the takers uh they're not just the high risk takers they're not just the offense players these guys are some of the they have some of the best matches in the company's history some of these guys could be tag team experts some of these guys could just be stuck in the cruiserweight zone because you do still need feuds in the cruiserweight zone some of these guys could just be managers some of these guys could be other things within the wrestling realm you don't have to. You don't have to pinpoint people to do just cruiserweights. Because you do this, okay? That's just like pinpointing just tag teams to just be tag team wrestlers. You do this, you are going to fail miserably, okay? So I'm going to go through the whole entire cruiserweight division on Monday Night Raw. 
Cruiserweights on SmackDown, if there is any, I'm not going to go over you because you're not important at this particular time. You can't fight for the particular championship called the Cruiserweight title or anything like that. So you're involved in other storylines, other aspirational type things. So Sami Zayn and others, I'm not going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about the ones that uh, I can talk about. It's a sort of matter, I guess, right? So first, we're going to talk about uh, Mr. Davari on Monday Night Raw. Mr. Davari has not really done much. He had a few with Jack Gallagher, which was good. He got Jack Gallagher over. But uh, Arari Davari, well, I mean, the, the quite honest thing about this guy, uh, his gimmick is a little controversial, but I like that. Okay, His brother, Sean Davari, had also that same type of character. This is what I would do with Mr. Arari Davari. I'd bring it back his brother, Sean Davari. Um, I know it's very controversial, but in my opinion, if you're not creating controversy, you're not creating content and creativeness that is suitable enough for an audience to be entertained by. You don't have to have these guys blow up the fucking ring or anything. You have to have these guys do something more sophisticated. All right. So Mr. Davari, the Davari brothers, um, you can give them a clever name. You can have these two go into the tag team division, feud with different teams. Don't have them just be a job team. Have them be a team that's sophisticated and actually do some get some stuff over. Um, if they, you know, create a tag team title for the um, cruiserweights, you can have that going for them. But I think Sean Davari would be a fantastic mentor for Rari Davari, his younger brother, um, in multiple different forms and fashions. But I think they would be a very good team and possibly, in storyline purposes, a possibly a dangerous team to mess with. I would like to see that happen. Number two would be Austin Aries. Austin Aries is he's booked pretty good, really tell you the truth. Austin Aries could actually, I, in my personal opinion, I would keep Aries a part of the Cruiserweight division from six months to a year just to make uh, the Cruiserweight seem more important because Aries – Without knowing it, Aries, when he works with certain guys or when he works with certain division of guys, uh, he makes them look better. Okay, let's be honest with ourselves. He makes them look better because he's a all-around good athlete. He's a good performer in and out of the ring. Um, and I think Aries could be in the United States Intercontinental title pitcher and also the world title pitcher. Um, I know it's a little stretch for the world title pitcher this soon from his – actual debut on main screen as a professional wrestler um, instead of an announcer, but I could very well see him making major strides um, in the United States and in the Intercontinental title pitcher, um, which means Dean Ambrose could have a new and improved challenger for the Intercontinental title, Austin Aries versus Dean Ambrose. That would be incredible. Um, Austin Aries is good enough where he can't they should not limit him just by the cruiserweight division. Um, I I don't like that. Eliminating certain people to certain divisions pisses me off, and I think that Aries just is a, an explosive a, a character that is should be exposed more uh, due to his experience on the mic, his experience in the ring, and all that good stuff. All right. Moving along, or long, I would say Bo Dallas would be number three. Bo Dallas has sort of fallen through the cracks of hell. Um, he doesn't have any momentum. Bo Dallas, to me, in my personal opinion, would classify as a cruiserweight due to the standard that he has not necessarily their body structure, not necessarily their you know normal uh, wrestling style or anything like that, but I think Bo Dallas sort of has their um, – Type of storyline, and he is also in their weight. Okay, Bo Dallas doesn't weigh no three hundred fucking pounds, but Bo Dallas could be, he could be just like a Rari Davari type thing. Okay, now a little bit the similar, but the same. Okay, Bo Dallas would be hated by the audience just because Bo Dallas would think that he's better than everyone. Bo Dallas would think that he's tougher than everyone, even though he is a short shit. He can't get anything over. And, you know, I'll tell you the quite honest truth, Bo Dallas is swimming in a pond um, where there's a suction cup that keeps sucking him down, and he keeps drowning. Bo Dallas cannot get any traction right now. He can't do nothing. And the only way for him to do anything is either form a tag team with someone or jump into another division. 
So I would say what Bo Dallas needs to do is similar to what Ari Davari did, and that is team up with his own brother. Him and Bray Wyatt should have teamed up long ago on the main roster. Dangerous freaking team, a psychotic team that has multiple different devices and forms to become the Wyatt brothers. Um, the Wyatt family is over. It's done. Okay, Eric Rowan, Luke Harper, Braun Strowman, all on their own ways. Eric Rowan, probably going to be unemployed by the end of this year. Who is Who's going to be shocked about that? Nobody's going to be shocked. Eric Rowan loses his freaking job. Luke Harper, Braun Strowman, they're going to become bigger stars. Bo Dallas needs help. Um, not necessarily at the fault of Bo Dallas. He's a fantastic athlete. But WWE has misbooked him. Um, and not due to them doing this on purpose. I don't think it's on purpose. I think it's a thing where they have so many talented individuals on their roster that they have to select certain people to push to the main event pitcher scene. And if they don't, there's consequences. They lose fans. They lose subscribers to the network. They become less valuable to certain networks and, you know, all this, you know, different cities and stuff. Bo Dallas could be a major deal and a major um, altercational type thing in that company's history. You just got to utilize him the correct way. Teaming up with a freaking brother. Oh, my gosh. That would go over big. They'd be also an incredible tag team as well, might I add, because they're former two-time FCW World Tag Team Champions. I know that was a former developmental um, for the WWE, but that doesn't fucking mean shit to me because they're still fantastic. They're a good team, and they know how to win at any and all cost. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So I'm going to go in here. See, okay, see what was going on here. All right. All right. So we do have some comments. Uh, I am going to answer these comments real quick, and I'm going to move on to the next superstar. So Zargon7 says, what's up? I'm here. Zargon7, hey, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're supportive. And, uh, you know, um, that Sean Hernandez thing is um, ripping at my soul currently still. I'm not a fan of his. Uh, I know you're a fan of the Patriots, uh, but that's just because they're cheaters. You're a cheater too, so we're going to certain ways. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding, buddy. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a sticky situation. Um, Zargon7 says, I would say yes to Davari Brothers, but I can't help but think of the Shining Stars hearing this. Um, the Shining Stars need Carlito. See, I have a perfect booking strategy for a lot of things that are mishappening in the WWE with certain tag teams and everything, but certain tag teams have to be the job team. Certain tag teams have to be that team to put over other teams. If there wasn't any of those, how would you make bigger stars? You couldn't. I mean, you could, but then at the end of the day, all, most tag teams are going to look exactly the same. They're going to have the same type of vouchers. They're going to have the same type of this and that. It's not going to be so irrelevant. But if you make these, like the Davari brothers, if they did come together as a tag team, Sean Davari and Avari Davari, Avari Davari, you know, these two guys, um, I would just make them a team that just doesn't give a shit and they want to hurt anyone and everyone in their path and break people's legs, arms, spinal cords, whatever it takes um, for them to be noticed. Shining Stars, what they need to do is keep using that new finisher that they used, uh, the Backstabber Powerbomb Combo Kit, and um, that's the way to success for them. And add Carlito to them as well, as known as the Carlone family, um, and have them be a hill organization that likes to destroy, conquer, and develop a habit of this just rampage. And so, yeah. But the Shining Stars is a stupid fucking name too, so, Yeah. You gotta come up with a name that gets the talent over. Now that not a name that makes you just feel good about yourself and makes you go home at night and sleep well. A name that actually gets them over. Okay. Uh, the Reckless Rich says hello. Extreme blogs. Well, hello there, Reckless Rich. Welcome to the channel. Angel is back. Angel, hello there. It looks like that's cool. Angel and Reckless Rich and Zargon Seven. 
Looks like one of them left the stream, though, but that's okay. Um, Reckless Rich says, I hope Nebel re remains champion for a few more months. I hope Nebel keeps the championship for six months. Uh, the reason is because you need you need not only to make the championship seem legit, you not only need the championship to seem like it's one of the best, but you need this to make Nebel seem like he's legit. Um, make Nebel seem like he is untouchable, untainable, and just simply one of the best champions currently. Six months, good time frame. Um, I would say six months to a year. Sarkon7 says Nebel needs to keep the title. Um, I don't know why people are still mad he beat Ares to retain the champion. People are mad because he beat Ares because, well, people like the babyface. Okay? So they don't like heels, and especially they don't like mouthy-ass heels like Nebel. Nebel has been doing a fantastic job speaking up, speaking out, and letting people know that he is – he's not just that typical babyface. He's that – He's that heel that likes to make an impact um, and do it in such a way that people just don't notice him, but they continuously notice him um, throughout his motivational speeches uh, in the ring. Um, let's see. RVD. Um, RVD, technically, yeah, you could classify him as a cruiserweight. Um, I would say. RVD was him and Jerry Lynn were two of the you know very first guys who really took what cruiserweight wrestling became uh, in the days of ECW. Um, but nowadays RVD doesn't really wrestle too much. Um, so, but RVD in uh, in Impact Wrestling did become the uh, X Division Champion by defeating uh, Zima Ion, and so you know that's their version of the cruiserweights over there. RVD does have that type of style, that type of offense and skill and everything, so most certainly, uh, most certainly. Reckless Rich says, exactly, people wanted him to get pushed, and now he is uh, getting pushed, and they hate it. Uh, I don't get it. it it's, it's a thing of not understanding correct fans, because a lot of fans are like, oh, I want this guy to get pushed because he seems good. And other fans are like, when I want this guy to get pushed because he seems like he's legit. And I'm like, what the hell? You guys, you guys, okay. First of all, I can understand voting and rooting for your fans uh, or rooting for your professional wrestler that you personally cherish, that you personally respect the hell out of, that you personally want to see achieve their goals, aspirations, and make their skills become reality. But here's the key factor. It, for a lot of wrestling fans, it changes on a daily basis. They don't know who they're rooting for. They don't know who they're booing against. They don't know who they're cheering. You have to figure this out before you go see the show live and in person because if you don't, you're going to be sitting there scratching your head for five fucking minutes figuring this whole thing out. It's not a hard question. Vote for the person you like. Cheer for the person you like. Cheer for the person that you endorse. Boo the hell out of the person that you just plain and simply hate. Okay? And if you are against neither one and you just want to horse around and give shit, no shits about things, just fucking blue for both of them or cheer for both of them. You know? But most of the time it changes on a regular basis. Um, Reckless Rich. It's Argon 7. Let's see here. Um... Zargon7 says, RVD and the Cruiserweights? Hell no. I get what you're saying, but hell no. RVD, what? Um, RVD could be in the Cruiserweights, but RVD has a potential to say no, he doesn't want to put certain talent over due to multiple different forms and fashions of his critiquing skill. Um, and yeah, RVD does weigh more than 205, but uh, he has the same style and stuff, so maybe, you know, that's the thing where you virtue out. Uh, and RVD has taken on Neville before, uh, but that's where you virtue out and you have Cruiserweights take on guys that are actually more than what, you know, they weigh. So you have storylines where Neville is getting cocky. He's beating every single Cruiserweight that there possibly is to defeat. He's defeating every single Cruiserweight that he can ever face because he's beating them all, right? RVD steps up to the plate. RVD makes a comeback to WWE, and he says, you know what, for one night, I will take you on. And in a match of your choice, 
if you put that title on the line. You've beaten everybody else. But what about me? What about RVD? And when RVD loses that match, clean, or maybe even dirty because Neville's a hill, it makes Neville look like a bigger deal. And so that, that I mean, just, and it doesn't even have to be for the championship. It could be a non-title match, but having no win makes him a bigger deal just because of that. And then Reckless Rich says exactly. And just says, I want RVD to come back. RVD could come back, but he's not much into wrestling anymore. Not much into wrestling anymore. Uh, Reckless Rich says, Callisto should be in the Cruiserweight division. I believe Callisto is in the Cruiserweight division. It's just not a clear-cut um, indication if he is, if he isn't, and all this good stuff. But I'm pretty sure he is. I'm pretty sure that's why he got drafted to Monday Night Raw. Um, Sargon Seven says, I don't even know where the hell Callisto has been. Callisto has been on SmackDown uh, for a long time. Uh, Callisto um, has been in a feud with Dolph Ziggler, and he's been teaming up with Apollo Crews. But that it, that didn't go really much anywhere. Um, and it's due to the fact that they didn't push Apollo Crews and Callisto to go for tag team gold. If that would, they would have happened, even if they would have got a shot on, say, SmackDown Live, um, that would have been a tremendous, um, tremendous occasion for this particular tag team because it would have made them both seem more legit. That's my case when you have actual tag teams that are cruiserweights go for pic particular singles championships. It seems more legit and makes the championship seem um, more authentic because you're not just taking on cruiserweights. You're not just taking on heavyweights. You're not just taking on super heavyweights. You're taking on everyone. All and all comers come to the plate to face whoever the champions are. Okay? So it makes it more fair. Um, Zargon7, I don't know what the fuck you meant in that comment. M, M, J, K, M, period, M, J. What? I don't mean. Trying to fucking trick me into something here. A cracker. I'm a cracker too. Um, Reckless Rich says he was drafted to Raw during the Superstar Shakeup. That is very true. That is very correct. It was more of those one of those secret things that happened. So he did get drafted, um, but it was a thing that they didn't announce until after the broadcast thing happened. So Sarkon says, "My bad." Uh, Lee pressing buttons. Oh. Your little kid is pressing buttons. Excuses. Excuses, Zargon7. I see right through you. I see right through you. All right. So Angel says, at least Dean Ambrose is on Monday Night Raw. That is a good thing. Dean Ambrose uh, is a very good athlete, competitor, fighter, um, even could be a possible good villain. The Shield are rumored to come back together. And I could possibly see Dean Ambrose uh, cutting cords with Roman, Seth Rollins, and making himself the top heel um, in the on Monday Night Raw. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Um, you got a lot of comments. So TJ Rules is here. TJ Rules says derp. Mm. Only TJ Rules would say something that stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, TJ. Um, welcome to the channel, TJ. Welcome to the video. Um, Marcus Rich says, um, what's up, my boy, TJ? And then Angel says, hello, TJ. Ah, I'm thirsty. You want a cracker? You got to drink a gallon of milk. A gallon of water next after that. All right. Um, look at that loser TJ, said Zargon7. Oh, my gosh. Zargon7, you're trying to steal my gimmick of torturing the bitter soul of TJ Rules? You won't win this one. You won't win this one. Um... Zargon7 says, or monthly, mouthy ass hills like Zargon7. I'm mouthier than you are, Zargon. <laughs> I get myself in trouble too much. All right, let's move on. 
Jorgen, uh, Reckless Rich says, uh, why everyone punking on TJ? Hey, it's, it's easy. We go after the sensible uh, little kid in the front row that just can't stand up for himself. And that's TJ Rolls. TJ can't stand up for himself. He throws a fit all the time. He ha you know, has um, th just that look about him. You know, that people just like, ah, <laughs> look at that guy right there, you know. And, um, you know, we just uh, we have a good time with TJ. TJ's a good guy. To be serious for a minute. TJ's a good guy. Good YouTuber. Um, uh, TJ Rule says, Oh, Zargon7 is uh, going to bring up another classic in this live chat. Oh. The, the problem is the Zargon7 says that every single video that he makes, but the problem is it's not an instant classic at all. It actually becomes a uh, classic that you just want to stop the video and just shut the fucking thing off because you know exactly what he's going to say next, and it gets boring after the third line. My videos, on the other hand, are extreme, and they are very <sighs> untamable, undeniable, and un clear of the, what the subject actually is because people like go all over the freaking place start talking about 15 different subjects at one time reckless rich says he is a nice guy yeah tj is a wonderful person wonderful youtuber fantastic person he actually is one of the first uh wrestling fans that got me involved in getting youtube channel as well as zargon 7 and reckless rich was came soon after that um i'm going to go back and talk of, talk about the next cruiserweight that I think should have a little bit of more help. So the next cruiserweight on the hit list is, Zar uh, it's not Zargon 7. I'm sorry, Zargon, you have not made the list. Um, it's not TJ Rules. It is Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander, I don't know where he's been. I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if he's injured. I don't know if he's suspended. I don't know what's going on. I'm sure if he was suspended, we would have heard about it. But Cedric Alexander is a high-risk taking, offense playing, all-around Smack It Down type performer. He's one of the best guys on on SmackDown. On the, one of the guys, best guys on Monday Night Raw. One of the best competitors in the WWE currently going today. I think Cedric Alexander needs to stay going for that championship. We need to see entertaining matches, but we also need to see matches that make sense. Feuds to T.J. Perkins and his new buddy Neville that make sense. Cedric Alexander would be a perfect guy to feud with both of those individuals, the king and the prince, um, and make them squill like little freaking pigs being slaughtered at a slaughter farm. Um, because Cedric Alexander and Austin Aries will probably become partners in the upcoming weeks. Cedric Alexander should continuously aim to become the next Cruiserweight champion. And I would actually not be disappointed at all if he is the man to unseat, unseat, unhinge, the championship from here you go from the grasp of neville so i think that's what's best for him but after he does the cruiserweight division for about a year and a year and a half two years something like that i would say hell let him get the let him feud with the united states title okay what what's the issue with having cruiserweights feud for mid-card championships the cruiserweight title is a mid-card belt too you just got to continuously build talent up if the Cruiserweight's the biggest guy on the roster, like star power goes, then let the guy be the biggest guy on the roster. That was the same thing when you said when Rey Mysterio was on the roster still. He was one of the biggest guys on the roster. Even though he was literally one of the smallest individuals on the roster, he was more popular than some other people that you had. So, um, Let's go here. Oh, shit. All right. All right. So let's move this fucking thing backward. So next, I would have to say Kurt Hawkins. You can make a claim for him being a cruiserweight. But to tell you the truth, even if Hawkins was a cruiserweight, Kurt Hawkins would be the biggest jobber of all time. He'd be losing to guys like TJ Perkins and Neville and Austin Aries and possibly, the, oh my gosh, the return of Chavo Guerrero and Paul London and Billy Kedman and all these other guys that could possibly come back. Kurt Hawkins. Yeah, is a glorified jobber, and the only reason I would see him doing well, and I know he's a little bit heavier than 205, but 205, 205, who cares what the weight limit is, as long as it makes sense in the story. Because you could have a storyline that makes sense that Kurt Hawkins begins to develop and becomes a cruiserweight. 
So as long as it makes sense to me, I'd say Kurt Hawkins, what he needs more than anything else is to make a team with someone on the roster. Maybe the Big Show. The Big Show already knocked his ass out, so I don't really see that working out. But maybe something will work out for the kid. Um, I would go over Curtis Axel, but Curtis Axel, uh, oh, yeah. Um, Curtis Axel just doesn't have the it factor anymore. He's not the same kind of character as his dad. Um, Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning was incredible. Uh, one of the best gifted wrestler, wrestlers of all time. And Curtis Axel is just, he's like Mr. Perfect. Just a very dulled version of him. He goes out there and you can see that he's boring. You can see that his complexity level is at a simpleton level. And you can see that he is just plain and simply a blood clot from fucking hell because nobody wants to root for him. Nobody wants to cheer for him. Nobody wants to book him because he makes people want to go home. So the only thing I can say for Kurt Axel, Curtis Axel is to team up with maybe Kurt Hawkins and maybe they could become something meaningful. meaningful and, you know, maybe, maybe not, probably not. All right, I'm going to answer some more questions in the chat and see what's going on here. All right, so uh, Zargon7 says, TJ is my boy. Uh, we always talk trash to each other. It's what we do. Most of the time, you actually, too, get along. Most of the time, you guys have trustworthy conversations and uh, make things look good. Most of the time, it's me and TJ, going, TJ and I going at it, and uh, I have a good time tormenting TJ, and TJ has a great time tormenting me. Uh, we're all a group of friends. We, uh, we do it all professionally. And Reckless Rich says he knows how it works because he's in that same group of friends. Uh, TJ Roll says, what is Matt Hardy's favorite button to press on the computer? Well, it's probably the enter button. I'm uh, just kidding. Uh, it is the delete button probably, but Matt Hardy probably doesn't get on the computer too much because he's over the age of 40. <laughs> Um, Angel says, I met RVD and it was my birthday that day. Wow. What do you think about meeting RVD? Um, did you think he was a great, uh, person? Did you think he was nice, friendly, um, or did you think he was rude and, uh, self, uh, self-absorbed? Um, what are your opinions and thoughts on him, Angel? Um, Reckless Red says, we should debate on Ellsworth as we delete him. That's not exactly what he said. I sort of manipulated what he said. But uh, if you want to delete him, I will most certainly join you in this combustible element and make sure that he is uh, no rather deleted than anything else. He'll be so deleted that nobody else in uh, the history of the world will ever know what he actually meant to society. So. And then Zargon7 backs that up by saying, no, it's James Ellsworth. That's not what he said. It's James Worthless. Um, yeah. Pretty much. He's the little hog on the show that you just want to fucking kill. Um, and I'm and I'm very pleased about that so much. Um, Elute Ellsworth. <laughs> TJ rules. Um, Reckless Rich says, I'd rather have Gilberg. That is most certainly a thing. I actually, as well as only with that, James Ellsworth, since we are on the discussion of James Ellsworth, I would say that James Ellsworth could have been another guy to jump to Monday Night Raw since he does classify as a cruiserweight. Um, but I would classify him as the jobber type cruiserweight instead of the guy, the kind of cruiserweight that you would actually put over. Mr. 512 is back. Welcome back, Mr. 512. <coughs> Nick, welcome back. Mr. 512 says, the WWE needs to recruit from Mexico. Do you have any Pacific names that you would like to see come from Mexico, from AAA or from other promotions down in Mexico? Um, a name that I would like to see return would be Juve uh, Guerrera or Psychosis. Um, you, you have a tons of potential down there. Um, I would say those are two of them. That I'd like to see return, but there's a lot of individuals down in Mexico um, and even in Japan that are cruiserweights. That's why the return of Tajiri was so great. Um, I would also like to see the return of Chavo Guerrero Jr. TJ Roll says, "I rather I would rather have the Great Kali." 
Well, TJ rules. Nobody asked for your opinion. And um, quite frankly, the great Kali, are you serious, bro? Oh, boy. TJ rolls up to his own selfish antics. Zargon7 says, I'd rather have Michelle McCool and Lord Messiah and Savior knows how much she annoys my soul. Um, Zargon7, Michelle McCool. Hmm. Michelle McCool is very, um, hmm, uh, very, very attractive. Um, but I am going to keep this very, very professional. Michelle McCool is one of the, she should have been in the Hall of Fame rather than Beth freaking Phoenix. Um, of all people, Beth Phoenix is one of the least deserving to go in the Hall of Fame at this particular time. So, and that's what annoys my soul. Mr. 512 says, Cruiserweight division should have been drafted to SmackDown. No, the Cruiserweight division should have not been drafted to SmackDown due to the fact that the Cruiserweight division uh, needs to support Monday Night Raw in everything that they do. Um, with, I mean, some Cruiserweights should have been drafted to SmackDown. I do agree with that because limiting the Cruiserweights, again, limiting the Cruiserweights to just one show is making the Cruiserweights be smothered to death. And the Cruiserweights being overexposed on certain shows is also bad for business. So you have to make the Cruiserweights look good in all combustible elements. So drafting them to SmackDown would make other people from SmackDown go to Monday Night Raw and making SmackDown look like a smaller fucking show at the end of the day. So that right there is not good for business, not good for property ownership or anything like that. So I would be against that. Um, I think the Cruiserweights are better on SmackDown um, in their history books. But as of right now, uh, SmackDown is better for basically the workhorses of the company. Um, and really, right now, it's just it's a matter of time before um, SmackDown and Raw go to war. Let's have another cracker. All right. Let's see here. Sargon7 says, The Cruiserweights have always been a SmackDown thing. But the WWE added it to Raw because these dickheads want three hours of Raw each week. Mm. Well, I don't think they're dickheads, um, first of all. Secondly, I think they did that, yeah, to support your claim because you said the Cruiserweights have always been a part of SmackDown. Well, then you just counteracted your remark and your argument by saying that they are now – but they're now they're a part of Raw. So you said that they were always a part of SmackDown. Now you say they're always part of Raw, which means you counteracted your remark, and I don't even have to say anything else. Um, yeah. Reckless Rich says, what happened to Simon Gotch? Well, he botched away too many times and got released. No, the real thing that happened was he got in too many argumentative confrontations backstage resulting in his automatic release from the company. And uh, I'm not too upset that he is gone, but that may mean a termination for Aiden English as well, who may have an upside future in the company. TJ Roll says, I'm just here for the bitches and hoes. Where are they? Well, you might want to go to that porn site called Porn Hub uh, to find your bitches and hoes. Um... So that's where they're at, TJ. You're on the wrong website. This is YouTube, not PornTube. Yeah. Uh, Zorgon7 is just laughing his ass off, you know, getting a little bit of exercise there. And uh, TJ Rule says, at least I'm sexy. That's all it matters on this podcast. Uh, no, it doesn't because nobody can see your face. People can see my face. Woo, woo, woo. And that's all that matters. Um, you know, the sexiness in this beast of creature. Um, you, you're a simpleton. It's in your title. Mine is Extreme Blogs, and yours is TJ Rules. TJ Rules absolutely nothing except his computer, his house, his apartment, whatever he lives in, his little condo, car. He doesn't rule anything else. He doesn't rule the streets, the earth, the grass, nothing. That's a simpleton for you. A guy who thinks he's bigger than life itself. Wow. Um, Mr. 512 says, new rule for the WWE. The winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal wins a title shot at SummerSlam. 
I think you should make that official. Call the WWE up and say, hey, what's up, Benny Mac? How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you today, sir? Or whatever. However the hell Benny Mac sounds. And then he, you proceed by telling him that that's exactly what happened. That should be what happens. You know why? Because that makes sense. It's just like when you know Brock Lesnar won the King of the Ring and he became number one contender for the WWE Championship. Then he would go on to defeat The Rock at SummerSlam. That should be exactly what happens. Um, Mr. 512 then says, Star Wars Episode Eight trailer looks awesome. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm sure it looks phenomenal in so many different ways and functions. Oh my goodness, we got new people coming in. <sighs> mm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Zargon7 says, TJ's over here being like Shawn Michaels, getting all the bitches. Well, to my knowledge, TJ is like Shawn Michaels, getting none of the bitches. <sighs> Shawn Michaels can't see him at all because his eyes are so fucking crisscrossed that he can't see clearly anymore. I can't see clearly anymore. Oh, man, this water's so good. <clears throat> All right, TJ Roll says, I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Well, you're not a sexy boy, nor are you my boy toy. And you look like, well, <laughs> falling into your own trick. <clears throat> All right. Birthday Stevie Sanders is back. Welcome back, Stevie. He says that he's hello here. That he's hello here. He is here. Well, hello there, Stevie. Welcome to the channel. Uh, TJ Roll says, TJ Perkins makes my YouTube channel very bad. Makes your YouTube channel very bad. TJ Perkins is a phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal comparison. Used to be suicide. Used to be... Uh, the high-flying, risk-taking, offensive-driven superstar of Impact Wrestling. Now that's Caleb Conley, if anybody wanted that secret. If nobody wanted that secret, um, it's a spoiler, I guess. But uh, TJ Perkins is better than TJ Rules, most certainly. Um, then Sarkon7 says that uh, TJ is more over than TJ Perkins. That is incorrect. That is false information. Uh, Zargon7 likes to uh, speak up and speak out way too often and frequently. It comes back to bite him in the rear end. Um, Zargon7 says, damn you, TJ. I was just about to say that. Well, guess what? I just said it. <laughs> um... Mr. 512 says Cedric Alexander needs to leave the Cruiserweight division and go to SmackDown Live. That wouldn't be a bad situation at all. Uh, I just think that Cedric Alexander needs something more to give him more momentum and more charismatic being. Um, doing what he's doing currently on the roster obviously isn't working for the best, and it's basically limiting his skills and um, potential endorsements in the future. Especially Cedric Alexander is one of the most high-risk, high-taking, high-reward offensive players currently going on the roster today. And so I think, oh, man, I think that he uh, deserves, you know, some some key things there. Birthday season Sanders says, whoa, what happened? Um, what are, exactly are you talking about, Stevie? Um... <laughs> Um, CV Sanders says, I miss WWE. You should start watching it. Just look at old clips. It's good. It's entertaining. Uh, watching old promos of Shelton Benjamin, old promos of, uh, Stephen Richards, Chris Jericho, Christian, uh, Chris Benoit, tons of different people. Um, it's Argon 7 says, extreme is being more hillish than me. I'm jealous. Let me get real close to the camera for a second. Let me look Zargon7 right in the eyes. Right square in the freaking eyes. Zargon7, you're never as much of a hill than I am. You're always, see, I'm always up here. You're always down here. 
And the clear difference is I'm not trying. I'm actually being a full-blown heel. You, you try and then you fail miserably and you look like a clown when you do it. At least you're not a clown like TJ Rolls, though. And TJ Rolls says, I'm going to give you the gift of extreme vlogs. Watch the stream, man. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Mr. 512 says, Zack Ryder's Internet Championships needs to become a uh, sanctioned WWE title. Uh, that would have made sense back then when Zack Ryder was actually doing that show on YouTube. Uh, but now, since he's not doing it and he hasn't done it in years, uh, it really doesn't make any sense unless they want to reamp his show and reamp that championship. That would be cool. Uh, Angel says, Who do you think will win the next Royal Rumble? That's hard to say. Um, but at this particular part of the game, uh, I would say maybe Seth Rollins, maybe Bray Wyatt. Hopefully, it's, I mean, if Bray Wyatt wins it, he, he probably needs it. Um, I would say a member of the Shield. Uh, maybe Braun Strowman would be great. Um, maybe Baron Corbin, something like that. Um, birthday Stevie Sanders says, ha ha, you play G3. Uh, G3. Dragon Ball. Well, I don't, I don't know. I do not know. Um, I'm going to go to the next couple cruiserweights and then come back to the questions. All right. So next cruiserweight that we have is Drew Gulak. I was already talking about Drew Gulak, and I'm going to bust two cruiserweights right in the forehead right now um, because I'm going to team them up. So Drew Gulak and Tony Nese, at the beginning when they came in, uh, they are actually uh, fundamentally sound as a team because they were teaming up a lot, and they were actually a different type of team that I've never seen before because these two guys worked in two different promotions on the indies. So Drew Gulak mainly worked for CCW, he would periodically work for uh, Ring of Honor, and uh, he would periodically work for PWG. And Tony Nese, on the other hand, would per periodically work for uh, Ring of Honor and PWG, and then he would mainly work for uh, Wrestling Noah, which is a Japan wrestling company mainly. So these two guys team up is fantastic because Drew Golak is more of a technical wrestler, while Tony Nese is more of a high-risk taking offense playing wrestler who does all kinds of flip-flops and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, I would have these guys continue to be a team and actually challenge for the tag team titles. Even if they fail to capture the belts, it makes it still makes the Cruiserweights look successful. And it also makes what they're doing with the Cruiserweights successful. Um, limiting the Cruiserweights is not good. Okay, it just, it just hinders things. The same thing can be said for Finn Balor. Finn Balor is a Cruiserweight. You know, most of you are like, what? Cruiserweight? Yes, Finn Balor was a cruiserweight and still is a cruiserweight due to his weight limits. Um, he is he is a cruiserweight. Um, he's a very good wrestler. Um, he can go all night long in multiple different fashions. But he is the essence of what a cruiserweight is. So I would not be shocked if they had Finn Balor to feed him. But they don't want to ruin what the momentum that Finn Balor has set up for himself already, being from NXT. Um, so I would most certainly say that Finn Balor should continue doing what he's doing, and that's staying within the main event scene. That is what they should do with some other cruiserweights as well. Not necessarily the cruiserweights that I have named yet, but yeah. So gentlemen, Jack Gallagher, I would say he needs to stay focused with going for the cruiserweight championship itself, due to the fact that you still need top names. Um, to go for that championship, okay? So names like Drew Gulak and Tony Nese, they're not exactly top names in the Cruiserweight division, but they still are bendable names that are dependable to, you know, for Neville to look good. Where you come to Jack Gallagher and people like, um, yeah, I can't really think of any others. <sighs> Slipped my mind, but uh, basically Cruiserweights that look and, you know, have that appeal like Jack Gallagher, they are more popular in the eyes of the audience. So they automatically makes the match seem more um, historic in so many different ways. And I think Jack Gallagher uh, is a good athlete all around. Let's go back to the live chat. Um, 
Zargon7 says, did he just call TJ Perkins a prince? Bruh, I want to hit you with the red arrow right now. Well, okay. Zargon7, you obviously, okay, you claim that you're a wrestling fan, but you obviously swoop below the line of where it becomes an amateur wrestler and professional wrestler. Zargon7, you need to wake up, smell the flowers, smell the roses for once in your life, and actually wake up for amateur hour, because amateur hour is completely over. Amateur hour is designed for people like you to fail miserably, okay? If you noticed, on 205 Live this week, and even on Monday Night Raw, they mentioned that TJ Perkins would be the prince to Neville. This is not something I'm just making up. This is actually based on reality. This is this is reality. So Zargon Seven Amateur Hour is up. You need to wake up, sir. It's time to wake up. The alarm's going off. Reckless Rich says Rey Mysterio should return. I would love to see him fight Neville again. That would be another great, great match to see. Rey Mysterio though is locked into a contract with Lucha Underground. So I don't see him coming into the company anytime soon. But if Neville is still champion or gets a second reign uh, later on, when Rey Mysterio is free, that would be a good match to see. So uh, Reckless Rich then says, they should call Neville, Neville the Daredevil. Huh. If he was a babyface, I would go all the way for that. Because Daredevil is a, is a babyface character from Marvel Comics. But he's a hill, so... You have to give him a nil na a hill name that actually makes sense um, with the corresponding, but cool name, cool cool name, Reckless Rich. Um, Zargon Seven says Rey Mysterio is too injury prone. A WWE schedule would kill him. Not exactly kill him. I mean, he's not fucking you know, like you know fucking skeleton yet. Um, uh, he's not like um, you know uh, you know the Rock and Roll Express coming to the ring to try to compete against the Dugleys or something like that or the Hardys. Um, Rey Mysterio is injury prone because he's had a lot of surgeries to his knees, uh, but he's been wrestling in Lucha Underground for a while now, and I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in Impact Wrestling, but he, I could definitely see him taking on uh, Neville by the end of his career. Um, birthday Stevie Sanders says, I wish talk trash. I wish I could talk trash. Uh, I mean, it's easy. Just open your mouth, speak out and speak up and uh, let it riddle and rattle off, man. Um, to me, it's just natural causes. Um, sometimes it's natural causes for disaster, um, depending on what I say and shoot up and spit out. Uh, yeah. Rex Trey says, I know, but just imagining it would be, would have been great. Yeah. I mean, you always have to keep your dream matches available, and um, that would be a match that I wouldn't mind seeing whatsoever. Um, birthday Stevie Sanders says, uh, let's see. No, I already read that comment. Um, Mr. 512 says James Ellsworth should win the Cruiserweight title. It would be comedy gold. Um, you know what, sir? You need to leave my video. I am not a fan of James Ellsworth. I am not a fan of anything that he's provided. The so-called entertainment quality with him and Carmella. The so-called wrestling matches that are five-star classics. None of it. His back star hat, his back slabbing comments, his uh, his stupid comedy, his routines of being a jobber and trying to be a main event player and all the same night. He is a pathetic excuse for a human being, and he should have something arrive at his uh, address, uh, his mailing address very, very soon, and that's called a freaking pig slip. And if you disagree with me, you can go to hell, you son of a bitch. Peace to America. Another cracker for a cracker. All right. As Argon 7 says, people forget that Matt Hardy won the Cruiserweight title. But when you say people, you uh, obviously forget me. And Mr. 512, I was just joking. If you actually left the stream, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> All right. So it looks like he left, but, you know, that's what you get for being a fan of uh, James Elderworth. Um, 
I didn't forget that Matt Hardy won that belt. Not at all. Um, birthday CB Sanders says, I wish TJ, uh, I wish me and TJ could talk trash. Go ahead. Talk trash to TJ. He'll light you up. Um, but you can also light him up too. He's very flammable. So, Sargon7 says, uh, he said James Worthless should win the title. 512, you just made the list. He more than made the list. He exited the video. And exiting the video, I think, is bigger than making the list. I think he exited the video. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, Arrow Star would be a great addition from Mexico. Yeah, actually, yeah. Arrow Star is a great... great that would be a great addition, Mr. 512. Rick Fritz says, my RVD figure just got here. And it got signed by RVD himself. That's amazing. That's cool. Uh, when did that take place? Reckless Rich. And how'd you get that done? Uh, Reckless Rich says, Own Hart should have been WWE champion. Not disputing that. He was on a uh, high decline to be, get that championship uh, due, you know, during his death. But sad what happens. Um, Mr. 512 says, I think Own Hart was a little overrated. Um, maybe a little bit, but I think every wrestler in some way is overrated in some combustible way. Um, not everyone, but a lot of wrestlers are uh, overrated in different ways. Um, again, Stevie says that he wishes that him and TJ could talk trash to each other. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go back to and talk about a couple more cruiserweights. So we have Grand Metallic. Um, this guy right here should just stay with the cruiserweights, do what he's doing, do flip-flop, Flanagan-type maneuvers. Um, I think he's a good athlete, good compar comparable uh, circumstance-type thing, but he's disappeared off broadcasting TV for a while. I uh, don't know what exactly happened to him, but... Uh, Maybe he's hurt or something. I have no idea. But I think when he does return, he should stick with challenging for the Cruiserweight title and such. Because um, he's one of the more popular athletes at this particular time. We got the Shira brothers. Um, again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed for them challenging for the tag team titles. Um, but I would say that the most beneficial thing for them to do uh, is probably to challenge for the tag team titles. But also to challenge for the cruiserweight title too, um, to have two brothers. You know, maybe that's closer to the time that they break up. But these two guys would be fantastic athletes on the main roster itself. Ho ho, uh, yeah, Mister Ho ho. Uh, I would, I'd probably team up with maybe Tajiri or something like a mentor type thing, or maybe a little tag team type thing. But uh, you know, you just got to find your niche in this whole thing. Um, I mean, I personally don't really know much about Ho Ho. Uh, I know he's a good athlete, good comparable uh, source, but I, I really haven't seen much from him to say much about him. So I would say that he either needs to become a tag team partner with some name like Tajiri or someone else that he's learning from, or or uh, just stick with the cruiserweights and just learn from that and to get his name more um, hypeless. Then we have like Callisto. Callisto is an athlete that has been overlooked, but in my personal estimation, my personal opinion, I think Callisto is an athlete that could actually be one of the star features, star faces of the cruiserweight division if used properly. Uh, I think Callisto could go in multiple different fashions, especially since he's a former cruiserweight champion, or not cruiserweight champion, a former United States champion, and he does such a well gifted job on how he does things, but he has had a lot of botches in the last year, so I don't know exactly what the plan is with Callisto, but I would like to see him do more things. Maybe even form a team um, with uh, Gerardo, who's the next guy I'm talking about. Uh, they would actually be an interesting tag team. They both wear masks and such. Um, if you if you come up with something that is unique for Callisto, uh, and I know a lot of people wanted him to team up with back with Sin Cara. The reason they probably didn't do that is probably because Sin Cara has a lot of heat in the back, they do not want to give that heat to Callisto. Um, Sankara is probably closer to being on his way out. Even though I'm a, I like 
I like uh, Hunico. He's a good athlete, good comparable uh, source for uh, high risk taking offense playing type maneuvers. But he, just like Simon Gotch, had so much heat in the locker room that they just had to let him go. All right. We only get, uh, we still got a decent amount of cool weeks to go through. All right, so let's continue going through comments. Frankly, Rich says, I don't think so hell. Uh, so Hill, uh, he was probably a better Hill than Brett, and if you think he was overrated, that's fine. But his match with Brett in 94 at SummerSlam was a classic. Yes, that was the first time that Bret Hart uh, was in two matches at WrestleMania. That was the first time I believe that anyone is, was at a match twice at WrestleMania. Um, he was a good heel, but I think he was a better babyface. He came off stronger as a babyface. To me, he came off a little strong as a heel, uh, but that's just my opinion. Zargon7 says, mid-card champion for own hearts, yes. WWE champion, no, uh, only because of the era he was in. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't agree with that because I think, I think Owen Hart would have been a stronger WWE champion than Bret Hart himself, uh, due to the circumstances that he was in. And I think him feuding with his brother, uh, if his brother would have returned at that particular time, uh, would have made for him to be a strong champion as well. But he also had heat in the locker room as well during that particular time with, because of what Bret Hart said to Vince McMahon, not necessarily did, I mean, you know, but what he said. Uh, Zach Ryder says, oh, Zach Ryder says, uh, Mr. 512 uh, says, Zach Ryder show is back on YouTube. It returned last month. Well, since it returned last month, I would say, yeah, the Internet Championship should be a thing to come back. Um, and Mr. 512 says he agrees with Zargon7, which is great. I'm glad when people agree with each other. Um... Reckless Rich says, "Why didn't Razor Ramon win the championship?" I'm glad. I'm guessing you're meaning the WWE title or the WCW World Championship. He didn't win the WWE title is because he went to WCW. They was actually building him up as the next face of the brand um, and get, to give him a possible run with the championship. WCW didn't give him a run. I have no idea why. Um, I think it's mainly because he kept getting into trouble in the back. And he kept having heat with different uh, promoters that came through the territory. So, and when his buddy Kevin Nash was was doing, you know, was in control of the company, um, he was suspended from the company for um, drug or alcohol or something like that. So, yeah. And Mr. 512 sort of backs that up a little bit and says Razor Ramon had a bad drug and alcohol problem in the 90s and couldn't be trusted. Yeah, basically. Mr. 512 says James Ellsworth could be the top star in the cruiserweight division. That guy is comedy gold and has a heat magnet. Hmm. Well, I think you him challenging for the cruiserweight title would be one thing, but him winning it would be something different. Um, I think that he should not even touch that championship uh, as long as um, Car he's with Carmella. Carmella should be the factor to cost him that championship and to make herself feel more important. Reckless Rich says, that sucks. He would have been a great champion. Maybe. That's all speculation. I think Rowdy Piper would have been a better champion off of speculation than either one of those guys. Um, good, good, good. I'm at the bottom of the list. Cool. All right. Um, birthday Stevie Sanders says, hit him. Hit him. I'm not going to punch anybody. Um, Mr. 512 says, I'm here. It's fun to watch people get triggered. Laugh my ass off. I'm, I'm glad you're here. If you would like to subscribe for more content, you could definitely do that. I don't know if you have. Uh, and if you do, I will definitely check out your channel as well. Um, yeah, people get triggered, but most of it's just acting. Like I'm not upset with anything anyone said. Um, I don't get triggered easily. Um, I don't get upset. I just consider this all a game. So, the Tyler Keller show. Callisto easily could be great. Callisto could be easily great, but it's a booking decision. It's a difference between booking correctly and booking, uh, not booking correctly. Um, Callisto can be uh, a great superstar in the singles, in the tag, in multiple different reasons. 
Um, so, you know, I mean, me personally, I definitely could see him being something big, but that could be also said for TJ Perkins. That could be said for Austin Aries. That could be said for Finn Balor. That could be said for multiple different cruiserweights. Um, and a lot of those cruiserweights I named just now are getting chances outside of the cruiserweights, such as Finn Balor. Um, he could be the next Rey Mysterio. Um, he could be. He very well could be. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he's going to have to have a few more years because Rey Mysterio's been in the business for over 30, so, or getting close to 30. Uh, Mr. 512 says, Vince McMahon, original plan for WrestleMania 34, John Cena versus Roman Reigns with a Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit ending Roman beating Cena for the championship. So who who would be the one who would be the individual rejoining Roman Reigns in the ring? Would it be Dean Ambrose? Would it be Seth Rollins? Because you said a Eddie Guerrero Chris Benoit ending. That was uh, two different title matches where Eddie Guerrero retained his championship and where Chris Benoit won his first world championship in the WWE. So who would be coming out there to support Roman Reigns defeating Cena? And that would be an interesting match too. TJ Rule says, I'm back from banging bitches. What did I miss? Well, TJ, you missed a lot. I'm not going to go over the facts and the details of what you missed, but you should watch the entirety of this video uh, to figure it out for yourself. Mr. 512 says, the right to censored was the greatest faction never to take off. Ah, uh, ooh. I am going to respectfully disagree with that. I do not think the right to censor were even close to being a great faction whatsoever. Due to, um, mm, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. Um, let's see. Reckless Rich says, a dream match for me would be Raven versus Bray Wyatt. I would say Raven versus Bray Wyatt in a hardcore street fight for the United States Championship. Um, Zargon7 says, Extreme doesn't get triggered easily because I try all the time. LOL. Yeah, Zargon7 tries. TJ Rules tries. I just fling flop all these nasty viral comments back towards them. And they they do what they do. Keep running their little lap, yapper like they always do. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mr. 512 says the flock was better than the Wyatt family. What version of the flock are you talking about, Mr. 512? Because some, some versions of the flock were better. Some versions were worse. But overall scheme of things, I'd say the Wyatt family is better than the flock. Mr. 512 says, did you watch New Japan Pro Wrestling in the 90s? No. Mm -mm. A little bit, but not much. But mainly no. Um, Rex Rich says, this is an unpopular opinion, but I kind of would have liked to see Rhino as WWE champion. Rhino, at, he's, he's, oh man, that's, that's a big one right there. I don't think Rhino is a justifiable case for main eventing a pay-per-view uh, at all. Um, now, if you give him the backing to do what he can do, if you give him the backing to do um, everything that he can do possibly in the square circle, then Rhino can be a top commodity, a top hill um, for the company. Um, Rhino is sort of like a raven. When you have people around him, when you have people motivating him in like groups and factions and such, he comes off better on TV. He looks better on TV because he's more of that extreme type of character. But overall, Rhino as a WWE champion, I don't know if it would have worked, but that's not to say it wouldn't have worked. I would have rather seen him as like a WCW world champion or ECW. He was ECW world champion, but not more than once. Reckless Rich says, I just liked his character. 
I like his character too. I still like his character. Sort of. Him and Heath Slater are a little oddball couple. Mr. 512 says Steven Richards as RTC leader should have been WWF champion. Who the fuck are you kidding? Um, I mean, Steven Richards is a good athlete, good, I guess, good source of entertainment, but he shouldn't have been champion. He should have been Intercontinental Champion. He should have been in a tag team with Val Venus, just those two, and it's called the RTC. Shouldn't have added the Good Father. They shouldn't have added this guy and that guy in fucking Ivory. They should have just been those two. Rex Rich says NWO versus the Bullet Club. Um, NWO will probably would win that because they have more members. Um. Uh, Zargon7 says 512 is trolling. LOL. He is most certainly, but he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, Mr. 512 says, did you watch ECW in the 90s? Uh, more than I watched New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, a lot more than I watched that. Mr. 512 says, Rhino and Raven were awesome. Not, not wasn't. Was awesome is incorrect grammar. Were awesome. Because there's more than two people there. Um, yeah, they were awesome. Yeah, Raven's a shell of himself now, and Rhino is now applying to become mayor of a city, so much different days. Uh, Reckless Rich says that he agrees with somebody's comment. Uh, TJ Roll says Tyler Breeze should defeat Brock Lesnar and win the WWE Championship. Tyler for president. Uh, whew, TJ Rules, you're taking another taking another boat out of Mr. 512. That's trying to troll me. And that's incorrect because I'm extreme blog, so I can tell the future. And the future is that extreme blogs can see straight through your shit. It's crystal clear to me. Rex Rich says John Morrison is way better than Tyler Breeze. I agree. John Morrison should be returning to uh, WWE within the next year or so. Mister Five One Two says New Japan, uh, New NW NWO Japan was the best in the nineties. Uh, I, I disagree. I disagree. It's just because I, I watch WCW, so uh, I have my favorite. I think that the uh, first set of NWO was the best because it was the original. Uh, Reckless Rich says, you guys should check out uh, two other – wait. This is, questions are coming on here too quickly. You guys should check out Santino Brothers Wrestling. Never heard of them. Now, if they check out my video, I'll most certainly definitely check out theirs. Um, but I've never heard of them. What kind of videos do they have, Reckless Rich? What kind of wrestling videos? Uh, Reckless Rich says, actually, I did two vlogs at their wrestling shows. Really? This should be interesting. Um, do you still have those on your channel by chance? Uh, TJ Rule says, your channel is extreme bland. Mm. Man, I like to break your fucking legs. Um... My channel is not extreme bland. Your channel is rolling a fucking nothing. Because you, you my friend, is you're like this cracker. Broken. You hear that? That's the sound of your bones being crumbled. Um... Mr. 512 says, did you watch Bruce Blitz? No, I don't watch Bruce Blitz. I'm not a fan of Bruce Blitz. Sargon7 says, Bruce Blitz cries too much, but will admit I'm disappointed he's off of YouTube. I'm glad he's off YouTube, too. I'll take his spot. Mr. 512 says, Bruce Blitz uh, rants were epic. Epic! They were extreme! No, they weren't. If, if they were extreme, he'd still be on YouTube. So... Um, Reckless Rich says, yes, I still have them. Check them out. They're great. Hey, I'll, I'll check them out. TJ Rule says, uh, broken TJ will delete extreme blogs with his extreme blurring self. You know what, TJ? The complexity in this room, the level of irony is going to be very great. When I cut off your circulation, rip out your heart, and then eat your fucking heart with my bare teeth. My bare teeth. Not my bare teeth. My fucking bare teeth. I actually have 
fucking teeth from a grizzly bear implanted into my fucking mouth. Eat them, incarcerate your soul, and make you look like a little small little ant trapped in a fucking box. You, my friend, are going to be deleted. Your soul will be carcinated, and you will be a pitiful shell of yourself like you always are, yapping and yawning over simpleton stuff just because you know deep down in places that you just don't want to talk about that you really are a simpleton. You really are a little tiny baby that just can't stop crying but can push all the buttons he wants because in reality he knows that if he quits pushing those buttons, it's over. Lights out. Okay, back on subject, I guess. Reckless Rich were broken. Oh my gosh. We've got this fucking troll now. We got this fat fuck on here. <laughs> I'm going to call him that because he just came into the channel and just fucking started throwing delete signs up. And it's not TJ Rules. TJ is on my side. Me and TJ are just joking around with each other. But uh, this pasty ass, punk ass guy. All right, so we have Reckless Rich that says Seth Rollins versus Jeff Hardy. I wouldn't speak up too quick. But that match actually might happen this year. Mr. 512 says, Will WWE Backlash suck? I can't predict the future. I don't even know what the matches are yet for that card. But I'm going to say that that match, uh, that card's decent. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple cruiserweights, and then we can go back to that. So, my, um, Mr. Ali, he's the next on the list. My, um, he is, he's pretty good. I'd keep him as a uh, mainstay in the cruiserweight division due to the fact that he, he just seems like he has that it factor. That re, uh, inverted 450 splash is incredible. I think he has one of the higher insights going forth on, you know, as cruiserweights go. If all else fills and Sean Devari doesn't want to sign a contract, you could always have uh, Mahfasa Ali also team up with um, Arari Devari. Uh, that would be a unique team as well. Nebel, obviously, uh, I wouldn't just have him be a cruiserweight. I would also have him win the... Uh, the British World Championship. I would also have him win um, other championships like the United States, like the Intercontinental, like, hell, the World Championship, the WWE, whatever. Um, I think Neville would be a fantastic uh, gift to this channel. Or not channel, but I think he would be a good gift all around. Uh, Norm Dar. Yeah, Norm Dar needs a tag team partner, but I think he's a very good athlete competing for a singles championship as well. Um, on the main roster. And competing against uh, Neville in a feud would be tremendous. Uh, then we have Rich Swan, who I think Rich Swan is one of the best wrestlers currently in the company. Um, a lot of these cruiserweights that I'm mentioning are fantastic wrestlers, some of the best wrestlers that I've ever seen. But Rich Swan is a very good entertainer, and he's probably one of the better entertainers out of all the cruiserweights. Um, he's currently in a feud with Norm Dar, actually, but I'd say Rich Swan needs to continue being uh, in the cruiserweight division itself. Um, I'm going to lose people viewing this content. So I'm going to go back to comments real quick. I'm thinking the people are leaving. Um, so then we have LOL, and then we have Reckless Rich say, I hope not. Then this fat fuck comes in here and says, because you are actually having a rant on YouTube, I'm sorry, but you must fade away on classify yourself as obsolete. You are deleted. And then he put multiple deletes. Um, Zargon7 says, did Extreme just cut a promo? Hey, I can cut a promo at any time, at any, uh, any hour, because I am the promo master. Team Ro uh, TJ Rule says, the only thing you can pick up is that cracker. Shows how tough you are. Now, this cracker right here, this cracker represents multiple things in life. This cracker represents how I allow you. Keyword, allow. I allow you to survive. Just like I allow this cracker to survive on a daily basis. But when I choose 
to dismember this cracker and crack the back of this cracker, it becomes something that's disvalued. When I crack your morals, your values, and your virtues, you become less valuable. You become something that is unrelevant. And ever since I came onto your channel, you became relevant again. Everybody started talking about TJ Rules because Extreme Blogs was here. Extreme Blogs was here to conquer, devour, and make a statement. You, the only statement that you can make is a ah noise when you're taking a shit on the toilet. That's the only statement that you can make. All the other statements are pumpkin sounds of silence because you know when to shut the fuck up. You know that extreme blogs is just simply better than you. And this cracker is now devoured like you. All right. Then, Mr. 512 says Triple H needs to be WWE <coughs> and Universal Champion. No, he doesn't. You're trying to troll me still. I mean, Triple H, if he does either one of those things, um, I believe it will help the company out bigger. But he won't win both of those. Even if you are trolling me, I'll still go with the flow and let go. Um, that fat guy says, "Damn, but you actually call me fat fuck, cause I'm cause my name." Oh well, yeah, that's the only reason why, buddy. Um, if you're interested, you can subscribe for more content or whatever. Um, I I will definitely check out your channel, and um, yeah, I'll subscribe for more content as well. Reckless Rich says RKO versus Diamond Cutter versus Twist of Fate. Without a shadow of doubt, I have to go with the RKO. Um, I would go with the original, but the original actually goes with, it goes behind uh, what Diamond Cutter uh, DDP did. But we'll just say out of these three, um, I'll go with the RKO, Randy Orton, by far. Um, the fat guy says, give the right reasons, bud. The right reasons for what? I tell the truth, mother. I tell the truth. And he says, you are deleted, obsolete. Um, you are giving a rant on YouTube with four viewers. I don't know how I even found this. Delete. I'm just a small YouTube channel. Um, I have 158 subscribers at this point. Um, and I just, I give it my all every single time I get on here. And uh, um, I'm a dedicated YouTuber with passion, with heart, with drive. And I just have, uh, uh, you know, I just want to continue doing what I love. So, yeah. Um, TJ Roll says Matt Hardy for president. That might work. That might work. I'd rather have Kane, but Kane's from uh, Spain. So, Mr. 512 says the WWE will push Mojo Rawley to be the next WWE champion. Mojo will win the WWE Championship before Sami Zayn. Oh, man. You are really trolling people tonight. Not me, necessarily. Maybe Reckless Rich. Maybe TJ Rules. Maybe that fat guy. But not me. Um, I don't think either one of those guys need the title. I think both of those guys need a mid-card championship to elevate them. Sami Zayn is hurting badly for a mid-card championship because he is stuck in mid-card purgatory. Um, and that was, you know, the reason why AJ won, I already went over this, but is to make him classify him as a babyface. Reckless Rich says, does anyone else think the New Day should finally break up? I do. Uh, I think that should be perfect remedy of what happens uh, when they arrive on SmackDown. Oh, we got another new new uh, person viewing the video. Benjamin York, welcome to the video, even though he left a comment that's not appropriate. Um, Zargon7 says, not me, New Day rocks. Zargon7 is living in, underneath a rock. Zargon7 deserves to see the light, finally. And that light is seeing New Day break up. Zargon7, open your eyes to reality. Reality is all around you. And you currently are, you're still 
and uh, New Day is still, and we do not want to see that anymore. They do not rock. If they rock anything, they rock the still world of complexity that is simpleton. Simpleton. Mr. 512 says Big E Langston needs to turn hill. It would need to be him or Xavier Woods, and I think since Xavier Woods has gotten pinned twice in their last three to four altercations, I think Big E Langston would make more sense at this point, especially since Kofi Kingston just got hurt. Um, Reckless Rich says, I thought you are, I thought they were great, but they have gotten really boring as of late. Yes, they have went from being good to very poor. Um, let's see here. Mr. 512 says the shining stars need to win the WWE tag team titles. Mm, I would like that to happen. The SmackDown Tag Team titles, I would like that to happen just because I would like to see more comparison and more um, more fights that are – oh, shit. Um, more fights that are more entertaining, I guess, what you can say. Um, but I don't see it happening because the current champions are heels. So, let's see here. Um. Let's see. Rex Rich says Kofi Kingston should win the WWE Championship. Out of the three members from that group, let's see. Out of the three members for that group, I would say Kofi Kingston does deserve it, but I would see that Big E Langston would probably be the very first one out of all of them to win a cha major championship. Benjamin York, welcome to the channel, but. Please don't leave comments like that in my stream. Zargon7 says, damn, TJ, you got your stream blogs cutting promos on you. Yep. I got promos, but it's, all, it's just all for fun. It's just all for fun. Um, oh, shit. Okay. Let's see here. And then TJ Rules responds by, that's how, that's how blogs get triggered by cutting promos on me. Get triggered. By cutting promos on you? On you. No. Zargon7 says, oh, that's what it is, TJ. LOL. That's what he calls it, Zargon. Uh, Reckless Rich says, which WWE championship do you think had the best design? My personal opinion, I like the Spinner Championship, but the Classic Championship is also very nice. Zargon7 says, brah, this nigga talking... And only got seven subs. I'm freaking weak. Only got seven subs. You better look again. I have 159. But if you're talking about that guy named the uh, fat guy, yeah. Yeah. Mr. 512 says, spoiler alert, 3MB will return. That is incorrect information. You are trolling us big time. There's one viewer on this channel right now. Mr. 512 says Nakamura will be the new Funaki. I think you said that last time in the stream. That's incorrect as well. And then, uh, oh no, I'm getting a promo cut on me. Also, my profile photo got my New Day shirt on. That's a nice shirt. That's a nice shirt, buddy. And I'm not cutting a promo on you. Um, that was a nice promo I cut on TJ, though. Um, and Reckless Rich says, who else enjoys Lucha Underground? Lucha Underground's good. I think you're only on one on the stream now. All right, so let me see. I have to. I got a few more cruiserweights to go over, and then.
Hello? Can you hear me? Good or bad? Hello? Uh, All right, let's see here. I got enough thumbs down. That fucking idiot came back into my stream again and just thumbs down my video. I like to fucking smother him with a pillow. Mm. But all publicity is good publicity. If you can fucking hear me, you son of a bitch. All right. Can anybody hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. But all publicity is good publicity. You can fucking hear me, you son of a bitch. All right. All right. All right, so we're back. All right. Okay, so whoever, whoever did that is somebody that's currently watching my video. I'm watching you, TJ. I guarantee you that was freaking TJ that did that. I'll get you, TJ. All right, so we're back. I'm sorry about that, but I'm glad I could do that that way. All right. So we got some new people joining the uh, stream. We got Nicholas. Welcome to the stream, Nicholas. I'm glad you're coming here. Uh, I'm glad you came into the video. Welcome to the stream. Um, let's see here. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Extreme Blogs, you know, the network of extremeness. Um, yeah. I'm glad that everybody's back um, after that small delay. But Mr. 512 says the Miz will be Universal Champion. I would not doubt that. I wouldn't doubt it by SummerSlam. I wouldn't doubt it if he's Universal Champion by SummerSlam. Or maybe a little bit afterwards, maybe. Maybe. Mark Stroh says, there you go. We can hear you. Hello, uh, says Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas. Uh, Mr. 512 says, the sound doesn't work. The sound doesn't work. It's not working again? It's working, you shithead. Um, Nicholas says, yes. Cool. TJ says, I can hear you. Glad you can hear me. Sometimes I have to speak up and speak out for TJ rules to hear me. Nicholas says, perfect. Awesome. Um, Reckless Rich says, uh, yes, I can hear you. Nicholas says, I cab. You what? Birthday, Stevie Sanders says, whoa, scared me. Scared you. I scared myself sometimes too. Nicholas says, thank you. Hey, not a problem, Nick. Uh, anytime, bud. Uh, birthday, Stevie Sanders says, yes. And then uh, Reckless Rich says, I'd take Hornswoggle over the Miz. Mm, I don't think so. The Wizard of Oz is good to us all. He's good to us all. All right. So, uh, yeah, I went over all the cruise weights and everything. And there's no more questions. So maybe it's actually it is the end of the video. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so much in pain. Oh! I think I'm about to go get some drink. Alright, somebody else in another comment. Nobody else in another comment. Okay. Uh, did you ever watch Rey Mysterio versus Sabu at ECW's One Night Stand 2006? Uh, not recently, but a very entertaining match that it was. Um, I would rather see uh, Rey Mysterio versus Edge again, to be frank with you. Let's see here. Yes, yes, indeed. So what other kind of comments or questions do you guys have for me? Uh, I am going to try my hardest to answer those questions for you. Uh, this video has been going longer than my other one, probably. Probably like 14 hours or something. Uh, you guys impress me every single time I get on here. Uh, I am very happy um, that I am doing YouTube. 
And, uh, you know, the last video was two hours, 15 minutes, and 21 seconds. This video, I can only imagine what fucking, how lengthy this video is. Um, I am going to go get myself something to actually eat. I'm not leaving the stream. I'm going to leave the stream up. That gives you a little bit of time to come up with some questions and stuff. Oh, well, we got Nicholas. Nicholas has a good question. Uh, Mr. 512, I'm going to come back to your question in a second because Nicholas has an important question. He says, what are, your, what are you doing or what's the video about? Nicholas, the video is uh, about ranting on cruiserweights, the way the WWE utilizes cruiserweights. That was what the video was originally about. When you do live streams, that you have this main perspective, this main view of what the video is going to be about. Then it goes in 50 different directions due to um, commenters' questions and uh, different things like that. So I had uh, a personal view of how the video wanted to go, and we started talking about all kinds of different things. Um, last video, we talked about Marvel Comics. This video, we talked about all kinds of different things. So if you have any personal questions that you want to ask towards me, um, go ahead. Um, ask me anything you want that's appropriate for the channel, and I will be sure to answer that in a timely fashion. Now, Mr. 512, who's my favorite wrestler? I would say my three favorite wrestlers would have to be, um, let's see, I'd say Randy Orton, Goldberg, Davey Richards um, would have to be my three favorite wrestlers currently going. Or Goldberg is not really current gloom, but he was, he was my favorite wrestler when I was growing up. Randy Orton was my favorite wrestler um, a few years ago, like in 2010-ish. Um, and then my favorite wrestler nowadays would have to be uh, probably Davey Richards. Um, I also like Neville, too. Neville's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Is there any other wrestler I'm forgetting? I pretty much like. TJ Perkins is pretty cool, too. Um... And I like Braun Strowman's cool, but I wouldn't say some of these wrestlers I'm naming now are they're not my favorite. Um, so let's see here. Um, my favorite wrestler is Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam's one of my favorites too. I would say he just has to be in my top five. That I shouted out everything that he's done um, and all the impact that he's made on the wrestling business. Uh, Mister Five One Two says WCW did cruiserweights better. Mm, in some fashions, yes. Some fashions, no, but the cruiserweights in WCW um, were like the cruiserweights back in um, 2004 to 2009 in the WWE. They were given opportunities against bigger guys. And not, not like squash matches. But they actually went out there and put, put on good matches. Um, Nicholas says, how often do you live stream? Probably two to three times a week. I like, I like live streaming. It's actually... It's helped my channel grow a little bit because I, I wouldn't have the opportunity to meet individuals like yourself. Um, I also have had each live stream I've done lately, I've had new people come into the channel, I introduce them, um, and all that good stuff. I also have the you know the same people come into my channel that have you know impacted me to start YouTube and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Brock Lesnar says, "If Brock Lesnar, I mean Brock Lesnar said, if TJ rules, answers another question in the wrong way." Um, I'm going to have to disable his soul. TJ Roll said, if Brock Lesnar was your next door neighbor, how would you react? If he was my next door neighbor, I'd be like, man, this is fucking cool, man. I'm in, I'm in California or I'm in Florida. And, uh, you know, that's cool. And, you know, any other point besides that, I don't really care because I don't like Brock Lesnar. So I'd probably egg his house a few times a day. Mr. 512 says, uh, if you can... Have the power of any Marvel character, who and why? Ooh, any. Mm. Well, some of my favorite Marvel characters. I know we're going off topic a little bit, but I don't care. This is a freaking live chat video, really. So, some of my favorite Marvel characters. Rocket Raccoon. So, Rocket Raccoon has to be one of my favorite characters of all time right now, right? So, since... I would like to have the power to have ammunition or any type of gun and at all times, pretty much, and be this little fucking furball that goes around just shooting fucking things up with a cocky-ass mouth and attitude. Or I like to have these Wolverines, another one of my favorites. 
you know, just, you know, um, Wolverine, and then, you know, um, Iron Man is another cool one that I like. Um, let's see. Um, the Black Panther would be another fantastic one, have the ability to jump. But I would have to say the technology aspect, so being any of the doctors that are in Marvel Comics, so Mr. Fantastic, uh, Black Bolt, um, Iron Man, uh, Ant-Man, any of those type of characters that can build something and manifest it into something else, uh, that's what type of superpower I would want, personally. Uh, man, these fucking questions. TJ Rules, man, you coming up with some crazy questions, man. Um, Reckless Rich says, Rey Mysterio Jr., Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Chris, Man or Chris Jericho, Psychosis, Ultimo Dragon, Justin, or Juice and Thunder Liger, they were all great. Yeah, they were all great. They were fantastically well done. Um, you could add, also add a lot of other names to that list, too. I would shoot Lesnar. A lot of fucking hell. Yeah. Um, Reckless Rich says, I would watch an hour of Eva Marie botches more than Lesnar matches. I'd, eat, I'd watch Eva Marie get naked for me. Fucking more than Black Lesnar matches. I don't know about you. Anyways, Angel uh, asked, uh, do you like Pokemon? Yes, I do. I'm not really, I don't really know much about him nowadays, but um, I do, I like Charmander. He's my favorite. Charizard, my favorite too, or my second favorite. And I, I actually, I work at, I work at a toy store, so I buy toys all the time, and I buy like a, a Charmander figure, which actually, yeah, here it is, right here, little kind of guy right here, cute little thing. I mean, I, you know, it's a little small thing, and I also have the Charizard holographic uh, cards from the '90s as well. So I'm not going to show you that because uh, it's not about that. Um, in Star Wars, would you be a Jedi or Sith? I'd be a I'd be a Chewbacca. So yeah, there you go, Mister Five One Two. Nicholas says I will subscribe right now. Well, Nicholas, guess what? This is a fun thing about my channel. This is a fun thing about my channel, Nicholas. I will also subscribe to your channel and check out your content if you have any. Um, I'm an equal opportunist YouTuber. I'm just gonna say you subscribe to me, and I'm gonna say, yeah, fuck you. No, I'm gonna subscribe back to you, and we're gonna we're gonna enjoy life together. Um, Reckless Rich says Sting or the Crow. Sting. The Crow. Uh, Vampiro doesn't have any. Comparison to Sting. Um, let's see here. Oh my gosh. His comments, man. His comments. Can you deb? Anyways, uh, TJ Roll says, if Braun Strowman won the Women's Championship, what would your thoughts be on him winning the title? First of all, my thoughts would be, holy shit. Braun Strowman wins the Women's Championship on Monday Night Raw. Who the fuck is he sleeping with? Is he sleeping with Triple H? And second thought that would go with him in my mind would be, what the hell's wrong with this pitcher? A big fucking giant-like fairy winning a championship like that? That's some scary shit. And Reckless Rich says that would be weird. That'd be more than weird. That'd be fucking fantastically weird. Um, I'd take pictures and... Sell them online. TJ Roll says, if uh, Paul Paul Heyman was twerking in the middle of the ring, would you feel excited? No, I would not feel excited. Um, I'd feel I'd feel embarrassed. I'd feel very, very embarrassed. Can you dab? Most certainly anyone can dab. It's like sneezing. It is a sneeze. But can I dab? <coughs> There you go, I sneezed. <laughs> Reckless Rich says, have you ever heard of um, Screw Attack? They do a lot of fights on your, on your, on YouTube, comic fights. They're called Death Battles. I've heard of them. I haven't actually watched any of their videos recently, though. 
Oh my gosh. Look at all these comments. Mr. 512 says, what was the best cartoon of the 90s? In my opinion, I guess, because in the best, it's probably like the Looney Tunes or Bugs Bunny or something like that. But in my opinion, actually, in my opinion, Bugs Bunny would have to be up there. Um, I would also say uh, most cartoons on Boomerang would have to be up there, too. I love Boomerang as a kid. I still do love the, I still do love Boomerang. Um, any of those cartoons would have to be up there. And I'd say Pokemon would have to be up there, too. Um, and Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z is one of my favorites as well. Um, it's actually a Dragon Ball Z poster right there. Can't really get it clearly. But, so. Anyways. Um, TJ Rule says Charmander's the best Pokemon ever. Yeah, he is. He's probably the most popular. One of the most popular. Uh, birthday Stevie Sanders says TJ, email me, please. We need to talk. Oh, man. We got some urgency here in the chat room right here, right now. Wow. TJ, you have uh, you have something important going on, my dear friend. Reckless Rich says, do you like Yu-Gi-Oh? Not a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. Not a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, All Things WWE says, I like the Cruiserweights, or no, I love the Cruiserweight division. And TJ Perkins is one of my favorite wrestlers, but uh, the crowd isn't fond of him. You think his heel turn is good? Uh, yes and no. Uh, the yes part goes to the potential that he has as a heel. Because I think he's going to have a good time as heel, especially if they go with this King and Prince type thing, where Neville's trying to pass the torch to Neville, um, and then becoming a tag team in the Cruiserweight division, and possibly face other tag teams. That's the King goal, facing other tag teams. Um, that's a good thing. But the bad thing is that TJ Perkins is like a Rey Mysterio. He's a type of character that you should never turn into a, um, heel... And the reason is because he's just um, he's just so likable, you know. But when he turned on Ares, Ares is more of the character that is more of a heel. So, you know, I just yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm starting to lose track of myself here in the comments because I can't. I can't. I, I mean, I'm a small YouTuber and everything, and just gaining all this. People want me to. I had a screw up with my uh, audio earlier, and everybody wanted me to continue this stream. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, uh, Reckless Rich says, I think a heel turn could be great. I agree. Uh, TJ Roll says, worst, worst dab ever. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of daddy, but I am a fan of sneezing because sneezing actually is. Uh, genetically uh, impossible to avoid. Genetically impossible to avoid. If you do avoid it, your eyes will possibly come out. Not possibly, but they will. So, TJ Rule says, Sanders, what's your Twitter? It's probably, uh, well, I think he sent it to you. Uh, Reckless Rich says, who do you think are the most overrated and underrated Marvel characters? Um, well, I'll tell you right now, for DC Comics, the most overrated character has to be Batman and Superman. I hate those characters. A lot of people will hate me for that, but, yeah. Uh, but overrated and underrated talent from Marvel Comics. Um, I'd have to say that, uh, Captain America is overrated, Iron Man is overrated, Hawk is overrated, um, and Thor. Those are probably the main four. But I would say has uh, some underrated talents. Has to be like, um, you know, Black Widow and um, let's see, Wolverine um, and some other X Men characters. They're just overlooked, in my opinion. Um, Angel asked me, "What's my goal for YouTube?" My goal for YouTube is to um, reach a million subscribers. And continuously do it with a loving, kind spirit. Not do it and feel like I have to do it, or um, and not, nothing like that. Um, Mr. Five One Two says Batman the animated series and Dragon Ball Z best cartoons of the nineties. Uh, I didn't really watch Batman cartoon series. I did watch Batman on Boomerang. Um, that was good. The Batman the Animated Series. 
I don't think I watched that. Dragon Ball Z, yeah. Dragon Ball Z says, Batman gets too much credit. He does. Uh, birthday, Stevie Sanders says, it's his Twitter, Stevie Sanders. Um, you got it, TJ? Yes, he does, I think. Uh, Mr. 512 says, X-Men cartoon from the 90s was dope as a hit. Fuck. Um, yeah. Which one's your favorite? Rockets Rich says, I agree with that. And then Angel says, will you be having a gaming channel? I could have a gaming channel, but I want to stick to this one thing. Um, if it gets to that potential uh, and point, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, but I'm thinking that mm, it's probably not going to happen. And then Reckless Rich says, who's your favorite Ninja Turtle, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, I hope you're saying. And I actually have a poster of them as well right there. I actually have tons of posters all over my wall. A Marvel poster up there. A Pokemon poster. And then you even have Batman over there. Um, I would have to say out of all the turtles, I'd have to pick Michelangelo. Michelangelo has to be my favorite, and the reason why is he's fun, and he likes to eat pizza, so he's a cool guy. All right, so if there's any more comments, you can go ahead and hit me up. Um, all right. So, I actually am going to give you guys a, a, a few minutes to come up with more questions. I'll be right back. Um, I always have you guys... Oh, shit. Yoda got in the way. Fucking Yoda clock. All right. I have a lot of geeky shit. So, I'll be right back. All right. Do we have any more questions? All right. Um, what the fuck? All these questions. I don't know where you guys are coming up with these questions, but the, I mean, I enjoy it. Uh, whew. Birthday Stevie Sanders says, I say Naruto. I say no to our to <laughs> my cousin loves that show, um, but I'm not much of a fan. I haven't actually watched it, but I, I I'm assuming that I would actually enjoy the product. But I have never watched it, so go off what I know. Um, Reckless Rich says, "Would which DC movie do you think is the worst? Which is the worst? Suicide Squad. Not a fan of that movie whatsoever." Angel says, comment something. She did. She commented something. <laughs> um, Reckless Rich says, do you like Casey Jones? Uh, I mean, Casey Jones is okay. Uh, she's more like a detective type character. Um, she's all right. For what it's worth, she's okay. But I like characters that can make a big, big difference. And she, she can only do so much. Um, 
Mr. 512 says Casey Jones was the best. Eh, not the best, I don't think. One of the best. Um, let's see. Reckless Rich says, well, I guess we talked uh, among ourselves. Hey, hey, Reckless. Let me. I'm back. I mean, I'm I'm going to be going away again, but. Um, Angel, I, I still see him. Look at that. Angel's watching me. Uh, Mr. 512 says, who is the best Dragon Ball Z character? Again, I guess, I mean, I'm thinking you're asking me who is my favorite. My favorite Dragon Ball Z character has to be Piccolo. I mean, I'm still looking for the pop vinyl, the pop figure for that. I mean, I found him for 12 bucks in two different locations, but I want to make sure that's right for me. X-Men or the Avengers? I'll have to go with the Avengers on that. Um, Reckless Rich says that I guess his favorite is Vegeta. Vegeta's good. That's my cousin's former favorite. Now he likes Goku more. Um, Mr. 512 says Inhumans. So he picks Inhumans over X-Men and Avengers. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do that. I'd pick X-Men second, though. Third would be have to be Fantastic Four. Um, Angel says, what is cheese? Cheese is... Uh, well, you me to look it up for you. Let's let's be interesting about this. Make this video the ending of it very interesting. What is cheese? According to Wikipedia, cheesy is a food derived from milk that is produced in a wide range of flavors, textures, and forms by coagulation of the milk protein casein. So there you go. There's the uh, there it is. What is cheese? Um. Let's see here. Seal Scott's was better than Superman Returns, said uh, Mr. 512. Yeah, it was. But I, I, I think the thing that got me about Suicide Squad was that it just it irritated me so bad. Um, the certain parts of it just irritated me so bad that people said it was good. And I was like, oh. are you watching the same movie that I'm watching? Um, and then with Superman Returns, not enough people, everybody thought it sucked. So, yeah. Rex Rich says, Batman and Robin was the worst. Uh, I, like, I like, I mean, I thought it was decent. Um, Mr. 512 says, Casey Jones was not a she. They do have Casey Jones that is in, uh, or, let me know thinking of somebody else. They have another Jones that's in Marvel Comics that's a detective. That's who I was thinking of. Um, Casey Jones, yeah, there is another Casey Jones that's in the Ninja Turtles as well uh, as the guy with the pool, or not the pool stick, the uh, hockey stick. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that, Mr. 512. Uh, Reckless Rich says, Sting versus Snow Cold Steve Austin. My prediction for that would be that that would be a good match. Classic, instant classic. Uh, I would have to pick Austin, no doubt in my mind. Uh, Nicholas says, if you had to be hit by a finisher, which one would it be? I'd say the Choke Slam or the Tombstone Pile Driver, because Undertaker is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time as well. So, um, or the RKO, or the Sweet Chain Music. Um, Reckless Rich says, I have fifty-two Funko Pops. I have two, so you have me up by fifty. Uh, Reckless Rich says Razor's Edge. That'd be a that'd be a safe landing, really, with the, with that, unless you land on the fucking back of your neck. Mister Five One Two says no finisher for me. No, there has to be a finisher for you, so you have to take take them all. You have to take fifty five finishers in ten minutes. All right, so Reckless Rich says uh, Jared Leto or Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, no doubt in my mind, better actor all around. Angel says follow the train. What train? There is no. I don't. I don't know if there's a train over here. My train. I don't hear a train in my distance. Um, Mr. Five One Two says Batman and Robin was so bad it became cool. I think it was an alright movie. Uh, Mr. Freeze being in there and everything. It was okay. Rex Ridge says please don't start with those puns. I dare you to. I. I dare you to try to sing, Nicholas says. 
Me mama la she joy. I mean, my singing is more like fucking listening to a Spanish orchestra try to sing the opera or something. Jack was a better joker. Yes. Uh, yes. Let's see. Mm, see, the one thing I could do is do like a Spanish accent and and sound like I'm about to seduce the Spanish lady. So, some weird shit. All right, so I'm going to take a trip. You guys just stare at the Dragon Ball Z poster. And if you look closely, this over here, wait, this over here, that's Michelangelo. Deadpool or Deathstroke? Deadpool. I'm not much into DC Comics. I'll be right back. You guys just chat amongst yourselves for a second. Okay. All right. What kind of crazy dysfunctional questions that we have here. All right. Let's see. Um, how old am I? Uh, I am not going to give that answer to that question. I'm in my 20s, late 20s. Um, Angel says, fall on purpose. I am not going to fall on purpose either. <laughs> this is not a kid behind a camera channel. Um, Reckless Ray says, do you like Power Rangers? No. I'm not an endorser. My cousin has a whole bunch of figures from the 90s of Power Ranger figures. The big ones, the small ones, everything. He collected it all. Mr. 512 says, Raphael was the best Ninja Turtle. 
Raphael had anger problems. Just like TJ Rules had anger issues. <laughs> um, Rex Rich says, would you, uh, would you have liked to have seen the Ultimate Warrior versus Roman Reigns? Um, not really, because I don't want Roman Reigns to defeat too many legend, top legends like that. I'd rather see, like, when Batista was in his prime, I would rather see that. Batista versus Ultimate Warrior. Uh, Voltron was better than the Power Rangers. Uh, I'd rather say Transformers was better than the Power Rangers, but that's all opinion. That's all opinion. Uh, Rex Rich says, have you, have you played Twisted Metal? Oh, I love Twisted Metal. Love Twisted Metal. I used to play it with my brother. Um, played Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal 2 and 3, and uh, then we just never played it again, but we love those games. Angel says, what Funko Pops do you have? Uh, I have Iron Man, and I have um, Goku from Dragon Ball Z. I want to get Piccolo so bad. Um, my good, One of my former friends, good friends, uh, gave me Iron Man for completely free. It was a, uh, a rare. So. Um, Rick Rich says, I can't say I disagree. Um, let's see. Which, res which wrestler would you fight? I'd have to fight any of them if they can't, you know, if they tried to hurt my family or something. Uh, I'd fight JBL. And Angel said, well, Mr. 512 says, did you ever watch the Silverhawks? Not sure what that is. Not sure what that is. Um, Reckless Rich says, I haven't. Angel says, what food are you eating? I'm currently not eating any food. I'm going to be eating some chicken sandwiches, but that's about it. Something to eat before I go to bed because I got to be up at four o'clock in the morning. Um, let's see. Nicholas says, "How old are you, and what is your favorite sport or game?" Again, I'm not going to tell you exactly how old I am. Um, I think that's that's personal information, but I'm going to tell you that I'm uh, in my late twenties. And my favorite sport to watch would have to be football or professional wrestling. Uh, my favorite team is the Chicago Bears, um, even though they're horrible. But you got to stick by your team, right? Um, and Reckless Rich says, do you like Sweet Tooth? Do you like Sweet Tooth? Um, and then Angel asked the exact same question. Do you like Sweet Tooth? Sweet Tooth. Well, I have a Sweet Tooth at points, but I don't think exactly I like Sweet Tooth. Because it gives me time to go to the dentist. And then Reckless Rich says, I have a Roman Reigns pop, two Seth Rollins pops, an Ultimate Warrior pop, a Sting pop, and a Macho Man Reigns Savage pop. You need an Undertaker pop, a Seth Rollins pop, a Roman Reigns pop. You already have a Roman Reigns pop. Uh, two Seth Rollins pop. I'd say you need an Undertaker pop. Uh, Miss Stevie. Stevie's back. Welcome back, Steve. Um, let me see here. I'm going to be eating some food to the side, but you guys can um, chat away and stuff as I am eating and drinking some water and getting um, myself ready for bed, sort of. Uh, Burger King or McDonald's? Burger King. I hate McDonald's. Burger McDonald's, basically what you do is if you don't eat it for a long time and then you eat it, it destroys your digestive system. Uh, Nicholas says, play music or dance? Um... I like to dance. I love to dance. I lose my mind when I fucking dance. Uh, but I don't dance like regular basis. And then play music? No. Unless I'm listening to music on my on this laptop right here. Um, and, oh, my God. Fucking questions off the bottom. No. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, play music and dance. Uh, I'm not going to play any music if you want. I'm not going to play any music. Maybe tomorrow. Or maybe next time I do a stream or something. Um, Angel says, Carl Juniors or Tom Juniors? I've never had either one of those. But our relation to that would be Arby's. And I have had Arby's several times. Um, birthday Stevie says, sorry, my computer is acting crazy. That's okay, buddy. Things like that happen all the time. My computer was acting crazy earlier. Rex Rich says, I think for Survivor Series 2001, the team should have been the NWO, Sting, and Goldberg versus the Brothers of Destruction, Triple H, Stone Cold, and The Rock. Um, that would have been more interesting, I would think. Yeah. 
you would have had had the best members of the NWO play in that game. So uh, maybe Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner. Um, yeah, those probably would have been some of the members I would have had on that team. Um, have you ever watched OTRS? Yeah, I have, but I, I don't like his videos. I think the guy's an arrogant prick. So let's just leave it at that. And I'd like to actually meet the son of a bitch in real life because I'm, man, he he's he's so downfounded upon uh, wrestling fans in some ways. To me, it does. Um, Reckless Rich says, actually, I also have an Undertaker pop. Oh, there you go. Maybe nowadays you need. Um, do you have it? Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me? So somebody just unlike the video. That's okay. I don't care. 
It doesn't bother me as much as people think it does. Uh, let's see here. I know we have more comments. Um, okay. Let's go here. Let's go here. Um, Angel is laughing at me. Birthday, Stevie Sanders says, why funny? And Mr. 512 says, pizza is a drug. It can be. Can be. Reckless Rich says, do clowns scare you? Not, not right off the hand. Angel says, I'm dying. You may want to go to the emergency room, miss. Um, Nicholas says, uh, HBK in the Rock versus The Undertaker in Goldberg. Wow. That's a, that's a star spangled. Uh, I'd go with Undertaker and Goldberg. Yeah. Angel says, that's too funny. That's, that is funny. Rex Rich says, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Goldberg. That was actually a rumor match that was going to happen if Goldberg would have signed back in 2001. Um, but it, he didn't, so the match never take, took place. Um, yeah, that match would have been incredible. I think during that time I probably would have picked Austin, but uh, I was a I was a good Goldberg fan during that particular time. So, uh, Mister Five One Two says pizza is Ninja Turtle crack. It's also my crack too. I like pizza. I like making it from scratch. Getting it from an expensive place like Papa John's or whatever is it's not worth it. A whole bunch of people saying yes, they can hear me. I'm glad you guys can hear me. This is. It's not my computer that's doing that. It's it's <clears throat> it's the actual Internet Explorer that keeps cutting me, cutting me off of doing video. Um, Angel says, no, we can't hear you now. And then she says, it's just. Pokemon. What Pokemon? I mean, if you're talking about those Pokemon, you got like Zapdos and uh, some other legendary Pokemon like Motres, uh, Mewtwo, and others that are on that wall, that poster. Rex Rich says, did you ever see Glacier in WCW? Uh, did I see Glacier? That was a bad representation of Mortal Kombat. Let me tell you that right now. But he actually, he was booked pretty strong, really. You know, so what happened? What do you mean, what happened? Well, what happened with Glacier? I mean, they just the character itself, Glacier. The name sucks and everything else. So, I mean, you know, it's it's bad booking opportunities. But Glacier himself, the character, the guy who played him, was a pretty good athlete, and you could tell that by the way he acted towards uh, Chronic, Brian Adams, and Brian Clark. Um, can you can your next live stream be voted on this video? I don't know if I feel secure by doing that, Nick. I don't know if I feel secure by doing that. You guys may vote for me to... Who in the hell knows what you guys would vote for me to do? And plus, it's not really fair now because, like, Zargon 7's gone, and TJ Rules is gone, and so... I don't know. Uh, Mr. 512 says, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Hulk Hogan is the greatest WrestleMania main event that never happened. Yeah, but Austin, I would go with him over Hogan any day of the week. Any day of the week. I don't like Hogan. I think he's overrated and overhyped, most certainly. Um, let's see here. Angel says chocolate or candy. As candy technically is chocolate. Um, but if you're just talking like chocolate type to other candies, I would pick other candies actually, like Skittles or Starburst or stuff like that. Starburst is fantastic. Or gummy bears. That's fantastic too. Uh, Reckless Rich says, what was your reaction to David Arquette? Oh, I almost fucking threw myself through the TV. I was like, you son of a bitch, you fucking asshole. I don't want to break your goddamn foot. Um, I, I wasn't happy. I think it's stupid move. It was a stupid move. It was one of the, uh, the blows that ended the company's history. Uh, Reckless Rich says, are you a big fan of Mortal Kombat? I love Mortal Kombat shit. Um, Mortal Kombat's awesome. That's all I can say about that. Um, uh, 
Mr. 512 says, who is the best Mortal Kombat character of all time? That, again, I mean, the best, or my opinion. Um, I'm guessing you're talking about who, in my opinion, is the best character of all time. Uh, I always have been a fan of uh, Liu Kane and Kun Lao. And I've also been a fan of Nightwolf, uh, as well as like Sector and um, Cyrax. So those are my favorites. Um, let's see here. Uh, Reckless Rich says, if Hogan be began his career today with the same character, the same wrestling ability, I don't think he would have been over. No, he would have not. He would have been a mid-card talent at best. It's all due to, uh, like, Bruno San Martino. If he, well, I mean, Bruno San Martino, if he would have came in today, he probably would have done halfway decent, but that's just because his character was a badass character. Uh, Angel says, do you have a PS4, PS3? Uh, no. I don't have either one of those, but I do have a uh, regular PlayStation. I have a uh, Sega Saturn, and I have an Xbox 360. Uh, Nicholas says, what are your thoughts on WrestleMania 33? I'm guessing you meant WrestleMania, not uh, Weaselmania, but I understand what you're saying. WrestleMania 33, I think, was one of the better WrestleManias as of late. Um, yeah, I think it was a good WrestleMania. Fantastic. From start to finish, good WrestleMania. Mr. 512 says, Xbox Scorpio. I don't know if that's your code or something, uh, if your ad saver or something. I'm not sure. Okay, if anybody else has any more questions, let's try to wrap this up. Drink me some more water as you guys are figuring out some more questions. Okay. Do you think CM Punk will ever return? No. <laughs> Just simple, no. <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to be possible. No, not going to return. Oh, my God. All right. Let's see here. Scorpion is the best Mortal Kombat character ever by Mr. 512. Uh, he's a good character. Probably one of their more popular ones, to tell you the truth. Rush Rush says, do you watch Lucha Underground? I don't watch it on a regular basis, but what I do is I do I do keep up with the programming. Um, Angel says, will this get answered? Um, well, yes, it will. Mr. 512 says, CM Punk will return never say never in wrestling. I don't say, I don't think he'll ever return except for the Hall of Fame. That's it. Macho Man never returned. Perfect example. I can go on and on about guys who never returned to the WWE. But... All right. Anybody else have any more questions for me? What was my reaction to Shockmaster's debut in WCW? Well, I think it was a waste of time for um, the tugboat to come to WCW for that reason alone. But yeah, that was that was funny. It was it was it's an iconic moment that everybody knows now. Um, they almost killed CM Punk. Yeah, they almost a lot of people almost killed CM Punk, especially in his UFC debut. Nick says, do you think Undertaker really retired? Yeah, he's about to have hip replacement. 
surgery and yeah, he's not going to have time to uh, compete anymore. What was your reaction to Shockmaster's debut? Oh, I already read that. Sorry, Rick. Was Rich? I read that twice. Angel says, who's your favorite team in the NFL? Chicago Bears. Who's your favorite team? Uh, Mr. 512 says, what do you think about WWE's revisionist history? Um, I mean, I like wrestling history. So, I mean, I don't really look at it from just WWE's wrestling point. I look at it from all wrestling standpoints. And, uh, yeah. TJ Rolls has finally returned. Yay! Yes, Rip TJ, we're still here. Um, I'm about to get off here, though, but they're still asking questions and everything. So just keep it up. Just keep it up. Reckless Rich says, uh, what do you think was the worst WrestleMania match of all time? Um, hmm. I would say probably Kane versus the Great Holly. Um, that match was pretty sloppy. But I would say, yeah, that match right there is probably, or some of the Battle Royals in early, the early 2000s were bad too. Angel says hers are the Raiders. Well, the Raiders are pretty happy right now because they just got uh, Mershon, or uh, they got Mr. Lynch to sign with them, uh, even though it's weird because I guess the Seahawks still have custody of him or something, but he's still signed with the Raiders, so I don't know if there's like a trade being worked out or something. Mr. 5-1 says, would WWE be better without Vince McMahon? Um, I don't know. Maybe a little bit, because Triple H is he's more up to times. So TJ Rolls boos me. Well, fuck you, asshole. And then Reckless Rich says, yeah. Nicholas says, "What will be your, what will be your wrestling name and signature and finisher?" Actually, I, I already came up with this. All right. So my wrestling name would be well, either the Viper Hunter, like the Pokemon.
All right. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hello? A yes or a no? Kinda. Can you hear me? All right. So let's scoot this over. All right, TJ boos me again. Well, f this is for you, TJ. This is for you, you fucking bitch. Stick, turn this sandwich sideways and stick it straight up your arse. All right. I'm going to answer just a few more questions. I'm going to get off here, okay, guys? Been on here for like three or four hours. I love you guys, but man. <laughs> um, we got a whole bunch of people, basically. Let's see here. Um... Sound is dead, can't hear you. And I said, nope, bad internet. Yeah, it's the internet because fucking Internet Explorer keeps going out on me. I don't know why, but maybe it's because it's late at night. I don't Google, uh, Google is the way to go. Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, it's Internet Explorer that's going out on me. One version of it. Um... Nicholas says, what will be your wrestler name? And oh, I already answered that. Yeah, the, the Viper Hunter um, from Mexico. Uh, with my tag team partner from Japan, the Black Hawk. And then, um, let's see. My other character would be so called from Pan as the Black, uh, or as the uh, Broken Star. Sort of like the Undertaker type character. Uh, then everybody says, yes, they can hear me. And then, you know, we have the yeah, boo, yeah, boo, yeah, boo, do. Yeah, boo, yeah, boo, yeah, boo, do. And then we angel boos now. Um, okay. So this has been an incredible event. Incredible. Uh, Star Spangled. We had a lot. I have. I can't believe that I had so many different new faces uh, coming into the channel to invoke questions to me. Uh, I'm very pleased. I'm overwhelmed by the response that I received tonight. Um, I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for uh, checking out my video. Um, share this video. Uh, maybe you have some wrestling fans that... Um, you either personally know, personally go to school with, personally work with, uh, family members, whatever this is. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So share this video. I uh, like this video. Give this a big thumbs up. Um, and I, I want to just sit here and um, viewer of the day. I never thought of that, Nick, but. I might, I might come up with something in a second. Um, and I really, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video as long as it was and as tedious as this was, um, we all did something that we all are probably going to regret tomorrow. So tomorrow I have to be at my, one of my jobs at four o'clock in the morning. Um, but I personally, I really enjoyed, um, yeah, I personally enjoyed this. Um, so we have a few comments that I'm going to be reading and I'm going to sign off, but Nick said, wait, say the viewer of the day. First of all, it's nighttime, Nick. I don't know if it's daytime where you're from, but it's, uh, it's nighttime where I'm from. 
obviously you can see the pitch black in, in the video or in the the uh, window but um i would i mean all of you guys anybody who commented viewer of the, the night angel says uh, good night and hello and all that good stuff and so i say hello good night to you and tj roll says i'm going to go back and bang my ex good night tj you don't even have a fucking ex besides a damn teddy bear uh, that is lonely and has very fragile holes uh, down in the uh, little region of the teddy bear. So if that's the thing you're calling an X, like a blow-up doll, all rights to you, buddy. All rights to you. All right. So, like always, if you're new to the channel, have no fear because John Woods is here and I'm ready to direct you all from being amateur, immature, punk-ass wrestling fans into becoming the cream of the crop, becoming wrestling fans to be proud of. Professional wrestling fans is not just this thing that we take off at night. We are professional wrestling fans every single day, 24-7 hours a day. And the last three comments we have... Uh, Nicholas says, when's your next live stream? Uh, my next live stream could be any day, but most likely it's, it's going to probably be Monday. It's probably going to be Monday because I work, uh, work a lot this weekend. Um, TJ rule says, at least the teddy bear has more charisma, charis charisma than you do. Oh, um, here's the funny thing about that. TJ, you know, all those fibers. You know, all those little tiny bits of fur that a teddy bear has. I'll turn those some bitches sideways and I'll stick them straight up your candy punk ass. Because all those fibers are fine. But I'll stick all those fibers straight up your ass. And make it feel oh so fine for you. Because we know you like things up your ass anyway. So why not make you feel more at home by doing something like that? And does it have more charisma than me? I don't think so. You don't have more charisma on me. Fucking paint on a wall has more charisma than you do. And that is saying something. That's paint that's rolling down a wall, a thick wall, barreling down a wall at tortoise, snail pace. You blabber at the jaw, run your mouth, yipping, yapping all the time, just like a dog that sees a fucking rabbit in the field at night. It keeps barking, but eventually a farmer is going to shoot the fucking dog. Not saying I'm going to shoot you. No, but I am going to say this. I will tame your soul with my cocky breed of a mouth. Anyways, um, good day, says Angel. Uh, Ridiculous Rich says, okay, take care. This was a great live stream. Good night. TJ Rule says, night, everyone. Angel says, actually, how's your day? It's It, it, was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty cool. Uh, Nicholas says, roasted. Nicholas says, roast. Uh, he says, record on fire. Nicholas says, he is. TJ Rule says, ooh, LOL. Nicholas says, he will. Entertainment stuff. Okay. Entertaining stuff. So, anyways. Like always, I want to let you guys know that I'm not just here on YouTube for whatever reason. I'm here to be raw, uncut, uncensored, unsolicited, and I am always here to make an impact and do it in a such a way to lay it the smack down on all your candy punk asses. Until next time, be extreme, stay extreme, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Thanks again, guys.